Hello everyone and welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm going to be attempting to do some minor gunsmithing work on my Mossberg 930JM Pro Series shotgun. Uh, as you can see it's completely disassembled. The uh, parts are actually just uh, at the top of the screen here. The receiver, I've stuffed a microfiber cloth down inside because what I'm going to be doing is attempting to bevel out this uh, loading port. I've never done anything like this before. I do of course have a Dremel. I also have some different grit sandpaper and some different files here. Now I have watched a couple videos of people who have done it. I've never used a Dremel before so I'm going to try to use that as little as possible but I did buy some uh, polishing compound at the end as well so I can polish everything up and make it look good. My loading process would be grab the shell and load one and load it this way so I want to bevel this open because that uh, that lifter was grabbing my thumb during practice loads with some uh, some dummy rounds. I'm going to start by using a half rounded file flat on one side rounded on the other. We're just going to go ahead and and get started on this. All right a little bit of inhibition uh, before I make that first mar on the receiver. It's kind of like, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> but, uh, all right, enough dancing around it. Let's get it done. All right, so I've only probably been at it about five or six minutes, um, and I've got a nice round going on this side. This is just with that one file uh, using the flat side it's rounding out rather nicely than this uh, you know going back to this other side here it's got a little bit of a point to it a uh, little bit of an edge and I'm just rounding that edge down all the way down into the receiver so it had an edge on the top kind of an edge here and I'm just rounding both of those off and then I just go back through and I'll give it a feel and just keep going and I'm just using a file going very slowly when I get to this corner, I'll probably end up using this uh, circular one here, but I'm not there yet. Let's keep going. So on the sides, I'm not trying to open anything up. I'm just more so trying to smooth everything down and get away from these edges. I'm trying to have just a nice rounded feel to it. And actually, that feels like it's coming out very good. So let's work on this back little corner here with this round file. And again, I'm going to go very slow, very light pressure and uh, just kind of let the file do the work. I don't know how well you can see that but it's got a nice shine to it now. It's almost kind of nice because you can tell where you still need to uh, to do some rounding by the black. If there's still black on the aluminum you're going to want to file that down a little bit more and round it off. Before I get into this corner too much, I want to start on the middle and start working this middle backwards. Just kind of creating a notch to start working and I think the bevel of this will help create the bevel that I want or close to it. So again, not a lot of pressure, going slow, letting the file do the work. And I'm going more vertical. Than, uh, than 45. 45 would probably be about right there-ish, but I'm going a little bit more vertical. So in watching others, they've gone all the way up to the Haven part, the North Haven part. Um, and I think that eventually when I start to round everything off and smooth it out, it might find its way up there. But right now, I'm, again, more vertical. In fact, that's the angle that I've got. But I am going more vertical because I want to get that cut in. I don't care about the top right now. I care about the bottom and where that ends up. Uh, so I'm looking at it. And I've st still got a little bit more to go. I'm probably going to cover the, there's a 930 stamp and I'll probably go just to the top of that stamp. All right, so right now I am just to the top of that 930 stamp. So, See if I can give you a, a view of what this looks like here. There is a nice little notch in the receiver there. 
and that's exactly what it's going for. As you can see, it's right to the top of that 930 12 gauge stamp, and that's right where I wanted to go with it. Now from here, I'm going to start rounding out this side and kind of evening that out first. I'm going to finish this side, then I'll take and flip everything around, and then I'll work on the other side. All right, got a nice little edge going there. So now I'm going to start rounding it out this way. I'm going to try to flatten this out just a little bit. But before I do that, I'm going to get under here with this round file and take the sharp edge off the bottom of what I just made. So far, this is what we're working with. And again, you can see my scratches from going too slow. I might end up just polishing the entire bottom of this. Not sanding, just polishing with the Dremel, but we'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. And you can see one side versus the other. Got edge here, got an edge on the inside. Nice and rounded over here, and I'm happy with, uh, with up top here how this came out. I'm happy with that. Now I'm just ensuring that I'm not taking off too much, so I think I'm going to stop taking off from the top because I don't want to touch that pin at all. And I have just enough room where it's not going to cut me, but I can feel the indentation. So this is what I've done. Again, you can see I scratched it up. Not too pleased with that, but I might just polish it. Uh, polish it anyway. Um, but here's what I've got. Rounded that out. Again, I did all this by hand. Never even took the Dremel out of the box. Polished, uh, or I'm going to polish it with the Dremel, but rounded all this out by hand filing it and I am very happy with how it came out I might go through and just do some last minute fine tuning to it but uh, everything is much smoother much more round that might need a little bit right there uh, and, and this is all just you know freehand I didn't I, I had my marks drawn on there with my pencil before but uh, there's no sharp edges anywhere. Matter of fact, I'm looking for a sharp edge and I can't find one. So I am happy with that. All right, so before we polish, I bought this wet or dry sandpaper, 220, 320, and 400. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the 400 out. All right, so here we go, just to cut a tiny little square out. And I'm just gonna give it a very quick Rub down by hand just to smooth everything out. <clears throat> All right, so now because I scratched this receiver, because I've got this very fine, I'm just going to take the black off and, uh, and then I'll polish it up afterward. All right, so I had gone down to the 220 grit just to get all that black off of there. Um, the 440 was work, or the 400 was working, but uh, it was just taking forever. So now that I've got all the black off, I'm just going to go back over with a 400 grit and uh, try to smooth out some of those 220 lines. All right, again, keep in mind the only reason I did this to the bottom, the whole bottom, was because I scratched the receiver. But you wouldn't be able to tell now. You can still see Mossberg, made in the USA. You can really see how nice all that sanded up. Now, to put a polish on that. I think that's it. Let's get it out of here and take one last look at it. I gotta say, I am pleasantly surprised at how well that came out. The shine on it is nice. I'm very happy with the shine that I put on it. Um, again, having never used that tool and having never done this process, I, uh, heck, I'm happy with it. Looking at it, there are no sharp edges. Everything is rounded. I'll tell you what, that is smooth. Smooth. Now let's hope the whole reason I did this is so my thumb doesn't get caught. Let's hope that I took enough of this off. All right, so here we are, last steps. I've got the cleaned up receiver. I will uh, 
do another l full clean and lube of this at a, at a different date. Uh, but right now, I want to get this back together so I can see what it looks like. So, I guess let's just go ahead and put everything back together. Alright, so good news. It's back together, and of course, it is clear. Uh, no ammunition present. But, that's how it looks now. With everything polished up. I, uh, I gotta say, I really couldn't be happier with how this turned out. Uh, again, like I said, if I need to, and my thumb does continue to catch when loading, which it may, um, I'll just get the lifter welded. But I think that I've opened that up enough to be able to drop the shells in just fine. Of course, you can actually buy aftermarket uh, lifters. You don't even have to have it welded. You can just buy this part. Uh, and use that. And there might be a time in the future where I uh, come back and do a little work to the trigger itself here or the uh, trigger housing but uh, but for the time being I'm happy. I like the way it came out I uh, yeah I, I like it. So again my loading position is going to be like this I'll have a pouch of shells right here in the front and uh, so when shooting, you know, I'll go from the shooting position and I'll tuck under and support the firearm like this to bring that in nice and close to that pouch. That way it's less movement. There might be a day where I get into twins or even quads, but, uh, but for the time being it'll be uh, weak hand or off hand one at a time through a uh, just a big holder or a pouch. So I'm happy with it. I like the way that it looks. It's nice and smooth. It, it with, with everything put together like this, it almost looks like like somebody who knew what the heck they were doing did it. Uh, not somebody who had never used a Dremel before. So, so thanks for sticking around and thanks for watching. I will talk to you all again very soon.